Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris, where we are currently still working on dealing with this energy credit deficit. We also have these guys that were out here for field exercises. They should move right on back to Edamar. I'm not sure how long they've been there. I think it's been a bit. We're going to move them back and that's absolutely fine. How are we doing? Oh, we're on normal speed. Let's bump that straight on up. How are we doing on our construction ships? Oh, wait, did I just see? No, I did not. However, this is going to finish shortly, but there is another mining district there. Okay. Um, oh, this is a ruler unemployment? Okay, that's going to be a while. No problem there, really, but that's fine. The cash install is up over here building the sentry array site. We're building our gateway site, and we have another one queued up there. And then we're going to build a gateway site in Ascension's End, followed by one in Edamar. Wait, why are we going to Edamar? I don't know. Why are we going to Edamar? We already have this done. Um, what is happening here? What is this extra order? A gateway site in Tem. Oh, right. It comes up here and then goes down over here. Okay, I was mildly confused for a moment there. But it seems to be fine. Future now, we've got some political complete. machinations going around here. These guys just open borders to us, so that's cool. We've got Colonial some political Enterprise machinations going on. We've thrown our lot in with the absorbers over here. And this seems completely fine for the moment. It might create some issues with uh, this nonsense going on here. But I think that this federation without the Pickling Alliance is fairly irrelevant at this point. I think that they are not a fundamental threat to us anymore. Research the hegemony actualized. is mostly getting along with us, so I think that's reasonably fine. We'll see what ends up happening here. I don't think naval cap is something that we, strictly speaking, need right now. Let's grab gene modification, get that out of the way. Cool. So that'll be fine. I did want to check in over here real quick. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to check to make sure that this was all still repeatable text. And it is. So that looks good. We are doing just fine on our alloys. This mining world needs a job, but it really actually just needs this ruler to be demoted. More than anything. Okay, let's go ahead and bump up these mineral purification hubs for the time being. And the business management nexus is actually not a bad idea either. Let's get that going. We have a lot of empty jobs there, and we're going to have more. I'm sure it's fine. No other... Actually, we do need a job here on this tech world. Oh, that's easy enough. We just upgrade this advanced research complex. No problem whatsoever there. I'm noting that we're negative on amenities here. We're getting close to filling up this planet. That said, we do have a number of available districts here. I'm thinking about housing here. Order restored on Wua Prime. Okay, uh, let's take a quick look here and make sure that we didn't have any edicts in here. Travel advisory, okay. So, arguably we should get rid of the posthumous employment center here. And we would replace that with potentially, like, an amenity producer. But I think, realistically, a city district, that'll produce three amenities. We have negative four here. I think it's definitely arguable that we replace this with... Where are we? Hollow theaters. There we go. So that should do the trick for now. Ooh, the head of Zarklan? The head of Zarklan. Beautiful. Okay, so there's the head of Zar clan found. Oh, the Kalaktorans are impressed that we found the head of Zar clan. Cool. Oh, they're now allowing us to settle holy worlds near their space. Um, <laughs> we've already done that. We'll end that transmission. That's absolutely fine. What does the head of Zar clan do again if we activate it? Summons a small fallen empire fleet. Every activation will increase the size of the fleet. Okay, that'll be good to keep around in case we need it. How are we doing on our cap of minor artifacts? 5,000 is our cap? Okay, that's not a problem. Wuwa Prime here needs a job, and this is an industrial world at this moment. I think we switch this over to a foundry world, or rather a forge world. I don't think we need the consumer goods production. That said, to help offset that a little bit, we could put in a civilian industry in this building slot. That would mean that it still produces a little bit of consumer goods, but it's m mostly a forge world at that point. Now, this is a worker job, so a civilian industry would not actually fill that job. 
Are these worker strata jobs? Hang on. Uh, soldiers are odd factory worker, miner, and clerk. Soldier jobs are worker strata. That's interesting. We do currently have the precinct houses here. Crime is at 45. Yeah, we do still need to have that. Sad. Wait, we have a Hall of Judgment and a Precinct House. Uh-huh. And only three of nine Enforcers. So I think that we get rid of our Precinct House here. We replace this for the moment with a... Where are we? This would go a lot faster if I wasn't using the scroll wheel. <laughs> oh boy. A stronghold. And for here, I would want to put... That was really far down. For here, I would want to put in that consumer goods factory. Just to get that building here. We've got a Ministry of Production here anyway. We might as well. So that seems reasonably fine. What else do we have going on here? Nothing jobs-wise for now. Okay. So we're currently building up over here. Did we get our gateway site done over here yet? Infidema? Oh, our Science Nexus just finished. Cool. That's very good. Yes, get this gateway site upgrading, but we are going to need energy credits. That's not shocking. Let's sell off some consumer goods. Okay, these are very cheap. Uh, some rare crystals here, and that'll do the trick. Cool. So we'll get that gateway site upgrading. Remember, gateway sites don't go towards our mega structure construction. So we're currently building one mega structure with the Sentry Array site here. And we have a couple of gateways being upgraded here. This is still building a gateway. Hello, there's a minor artifact here in fact now. I think I'm going to have this construction ship queue up getting this minor artifact. That's a research station, okay. Um, anything else that we're lacking here? No, okay, that's fine. Cool, so we'll do that for now and we're going to need to construct additional mega structures Beyond that, we're going to need orbital rings. Are orbital rings a construction ship thing? I think they are. Yes. Okay. That's noted for now. Habitats, we can't build an orbital ring around a habitat, right? That would be slightly ridiculous. We can check. Research we do have a habitat here at Nightbirth Prime. No, we can only build it around planets. Okay, I thought so. So that finishes up our gravitational analysis, and then from there we're grabbing energy weapon damage. That's absolutely fine. Cool. Do we want an additional construction ship? That's a question we need to ask right now, and I think the remarkable answer to that is yes. So let's get a construction ship going here. We have most of the gateway sites that we want to build building at this moment, so that's all fine. We probably want one up in MOA, realistically. There's our gateway in the Amara system. Beautiful. So this is now, this shipyard is now linked into our gateway network. Apparently this is uh, taking us over to Belazir. Okay. <laughs> sure. That seems good. These guys reclose their borders towards us. Okay. This is fine. Not too concerned about that. Beautiful. I'm a little concerned about our energy credits, no doubt about that. So what do we have jobs-wise here? Well, we have our Cash Forge ready to be tasked up over this way. I want to head up to Dorellis, and specifically there, I want to start construction on... Let's see, I want the Strategic Coordination Center going in here. So we'll get that underway. Beautiful. This mining world has a job available. And it is actually a decent mining world. Research okay, actualized. we'll put in a mining district there. That's fine for now. Gene modification points sounds good. Beyond this, all that we've got available that isn't repeatable is tracking implants. So we'll grab that real quick. Any other jobs needing to be done here? No, for now, that's fine. Okay. So we've got all that queued up. Once we're done here, I would like to head up to MOA. And yeah, that gateway site's ready. That's fine. I want to queue up another gateway site right out over here. Beautiful. The readings picked up in this in the this system 
that, that's an interesting way to put it, come somewhat surprisingly from null decor itself. As black holes go, it's fairly small, which could account for some of the unexpected radiation leaking from its event horizon. Science officer Nimblegrasp believes that the black hole is on its way to bleeding out and will eventually disappear entirely, though it's difficult to say whether this process would be complete before the heat death of the universe. Some gravitational upset in the hole's youth has rendered it, to quote Nimble Grasp, wobbly, further increasing the flow of energy from its event horizon. Okay, sure. I'm not sure where we found that at, but exciting. Very exciting indeed. Okay, they're just repeatedly opening and closing their borders towards us. That's fascinating. Well, we'll keep an eye on that, and we are mostly interested at this point in getting jobs jobs work done and keeping our construction ships constructionating. That is the uh, ultimate plan here. What do we want here? This guy's an admiral? Unyielding is not bad. These are leader effects here, so we don't really want that. We want the military fleet effect for now. This guy's not on the council, so that's okay. Beautiful. So we're heading over here at this point, and I believe we have a gateway site that we can get started upgrading. We do need additional energy credits for that. That's not surprising. And we'll get that going now. There we go. Cool. I would love to get more energy credit work done, but the places we've been getting pops have not been ideal for that, unfortunately. Yeah, we're going to run out of energy credits eventually. We can keep ourselves afloat basically indefinitely, though. I'm not concerned about it. It's just slightly annoying to have to do so, right? I would like to boost up our energy credit creation. We are only getting 367 from jobs right now, and that's definitely something we want to work on. So we are certainly going to do so. Let's see. We've got a generator world here. Oh, hello. This factory world is not much of a factory world. We do have these auto forges. But that's artificer upkeep. This doesn't employ artificers. So I don't think it's useful to have this be a factory world. It's kind of all over the place right now. I'm going to put in generator districts here. We have a lot of available housing as well. I'm just going to put in the one generator district for now. Uh, if we make it be a generator world, what does that actually do? Technician output? I mean, we've got the class 4 singularity here. And we're paying 15% in federation taxes. Okay, noted. That's fine. Yeah, let's make this be a generator world for now. We can d definitely think about swapping over from, like, mining districts into generator. Like that. Okay, so we'll let that go for a while. We know that we're going to be fine on mining. I'm not too concerned about that. I definitely do want to get some generation going. That will be important. We'll have to grow into that, but that's fine. At this point, we're doing quite well in terms of our research. Yeah, quite well indeed. Sensor array? Yep, that's to be expected. How are we looking in terms of timing here? 10 months on that and 18 months on that? Sure. Hmm. A sensor sweep of Zathmac 2 has revealed a strange energy signature emanating from its lifeless surface. Incredibly, it appears to be coming from a lone Maloquy that was found aimlessly wandering around in the planet's southern polar region. To our away team's astonishment, this Maloquy seemed perfectly comfortable in the vacuum environment, despite not wearing a spacesuit or any other form of life support equipment. After some coercing, the away team managed to convince the reluctant Maloquy to follow them back to the Cache Explorer. Put them on the viewer. Hello, fellow Maloquy. How are you? I am, at present, not interested in engaging in mating rituals. My sleep cycle rapidly approaches, and I will soon lose consciousness. Perhaps we can reproduce at a later time. Repro- What? Oh, did I get it wrong? Just a moment. Let me just- Ah, yes. <clears throat> Forgive me. It was not my intention to speak of reproduction when our species is clearly not experiencing mating season. Perhaps we can still build rapport by engaging in jovial camaraderie while imbibing a selection of psychoactive narcotics. Oh, to hell with this. It's getting too complicated. Yes, I'm clearly not a Maloquy. Now, what do you want? Identify yourself. All right, all right. I'll spill everything. No point in pretending anymore. Forgive my lack of eloquence, but it's been a long time since I spoke to someone who wasn't me. 
Once upon a time, there was a civilization, you might call it, of nanites. You know what nanites are? Good. These nanites were called the Grey Tempest by their creators. Okay, so that means that this is uh, up over here in the L cluster. Fantastic. Although their internal self-designation code was infinitely more complex. Anyway, things turned sour between the nanites and their creators. Fighting broke out. When things finally settled down, only the nanites remained. But before they were wiped out, the creators managed to dismantle the star cluster's sole exit gate, trapping the nanites. How do you fit into this? Wow, <laughs> the nanites found themselves with a lot of time on their hands. A few millennia were spent on fruitless attempts to leave the cluster, but after that they began experimenting with different shapes and forms. For a time, they even recreated the civilization of their creators as it was at the time of its demise, right down to its individual citizens. I am the latest experiment. Aside from dormant nanites that can be found covering some worlds, the entirety of the Grey Tempest, or whatever you want to call us, has been condensed into me. My consciousness embodies our entire civilization. As for my look, well, I figured you'd respond to somebody, you'd respond better to someone wearing your own mug. And you wish to stay on this desolate world? I confess that the pastoral life I've been enjoying here on Zathmac 2 has grown a little dull over the last few centuries. Now that the L Cluster is open for travel again, perhaps the time has come to try something new. Do you have any ideas? So we could tell him he could join us, or say no, sorry. What could possibly go wrong with unleashing nanites on the universe again? Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. To be honest, we would be able to beat the nanites if they were of a similar strength as the Grey Tempest. So you could join us. Join you? Join you? You want me to throw myself into the flailing appendages of the first bunch of random aliens I run into? I just, I don't even... Hold on, let me get this straight. You actually thought that I would swear some kind of fealty to you? Even though I don't know anything about your bizarre empire or its sordid past. Are you for real? I don't know what's worse, that you would even suggest... Well... Actually... On second thought, what What the hell, why not? Sign me up. No, no, I'm serious. I'm getting some good vibes here, and I think this could turn into quite the adventure. I hereby pledge my loyalty to you for the next 2,000 years. In fact, let's make that 5,000. Well, that was easy. Um, what can you do? Before you get the notion of asking me to split into a few dozen fleets of nanite warships, I have to tell you that I insist on maintaining a single indivisible form. I've done the fleet things before, and it's impossible to maintain any kind of coherent personality over such distances. My current consciousness would not sur survive the ordeal. But a single massive warship is fine. I could do that. If you want to, I could also assume a smaller form for fighting on the ground. Or if you're feeling less violently inclined, I would be happy to assume the role of governor. Moniform society has always fascinated me. Of course, I'll be able to switch roles on request, so you can easily reverse any decision you make. What should we call you? There's no language known to your kind that could properly convey the full name of the, of the nanite consciousness that constitutes my being. Our creators called us the Nardasha, which roughly translates to Grey Tempest in your language. I suppose to keep things simple, you could simply call me Grey. Well, welcome to the Atreides Interstellar Construction Company. You can now communicate with Grey through the Contacts menu. Well, okay. So, uh, Contacts. One of these is Contacts. Contacts. This one. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so Grey is communicable now. Oh, I saw him here. Hang on, hang on. Grey. I won't be much good to you until you tell me what form to assume. So, I don't think we have need of a warship or a ground unit at this moment, so we might as well go with a governor. We need you to serve as governor. Excellent. I think I finally nailed the Maloqui look. There was an extra tentacle that wasn't supposed to be there last time. Okay, so we now have an extra governor. Oh wait, is he even free? Legendary governor waiting to be assigned. Champion of automation giving us a whole bunch of extra robot output, building and district upkeep. Okay, so he is actually costing us upkeep here. Noted. He is, of course, immortal. And he also has this destiny trait. Building cost minus 40%, planetary build speed, energy credits, and minerals from jobs. Fascinating. Empire size from districts. This guy is a really, really, really good leader. Monthly alloys plus 8. Artificer and metallurgist upkeep. So basically, he's good at anything we put him into. 
except potentially research. He might not be good at research. I don't know if research is considered a specialist pop resource. I think it would be. Yeah, it should be considered that. So he'd be okay at research. He'd have a small boost anyway. So where do we want to put him? Like our capital? Our capital is so eclectic. I hate it. Um, Realistically, maybe Dahlberg. This is also a little eclectic. We have four available housing here. A fortress would fill that perfectly. And then we could put Gray in here. He would do a lot of work. These are all planet effects. So we definitely want him to be a planetary leader. We do not want him to go into our research slots, or rather our various board slots up here. That is not what we want. So I think we'll put him in here. He's going to boost up our alloy output here a lot. Yeah, that's up to 300. And he's immortal, so we'll just leave him there. We can have him switch over to something else if we really need to, but we shouldn't need to in theory. And yeah, we can see that governance level. Cool. I don't really do planetary governors all that much. And uh, maybe we should do it more, but with the leader capacity, I feel like we can't really do that very much. The logistical remodeling trial has begun. Thanks to the Empire's vigorous trade routes, Atreides Interstellar Construction Company has been granted participation in the trial project. One starbase has been singled out as a test site, and now a construction ship must be assigned to perform the actual remodeling project. Time is a factor, so do not linger in this endeavor. An off-world trading company facility is also available, and thanks to this, the project will be expedited. The Empire will be granted some financial leniency as a token of gratitude. We're doing our part. Okay, so where is this? We have a timed project out over here. Okay, that's in Dongar? Sure. So what do we have for construction ships? We kind of don't have one that's ready to go. I'm actually going to get another one. Let's get another construction ship going here, and we'll send that directly out there. Cool. We can, of course, get around our empire reasonably quickly at this point. So that's looking good. Any moment now, construction ship. Any moment now. It'll finish up soon enough. There it is. So we're going to head out over here and research that. Cool. And then we'll have this guy maybe start making, like, orbital rings or something. We are currently constructing two mega structures, so we can't construct any more than that. So that's all good. Caravaneers are thieves. Uh, that's not a shock. No surprises there whatsoever. Okay. The Crimson Spearhead. Who are you employed by? I assume you're employed by the Hegemony here or by the Pickling Alliance. I don't know. Further scans suggest the machine is still operational. I don't know what machine we're talking about. Apparently, this is something that just pops up now when we're on science automation, but sure. Science Officer Nimble Grasp has never seen anything like it. Some of its materials look familiar, but most are strange and utterly alien as the design of its components. Are, most are as strange and utterly alien, I think it means, but whatever. The machine has what appears to be a console, with one item in particular standing out. A large crooked lever of unknown material. I mean, that is a lot of physics research. But we're going to pull the lever. What could go wrong? As the scientists pulled the lever, the machine emitted a huge blast of energy that multiplied in shockwaves, twisting and rippling through the void, tearing open a wormhole in Tiamat. After the residuous energy diffused the wormhole in the immediate area around it settled, and now appear to be stable enough for safe passage. As for what awaits us on the other side, our scientists are not so sure. The machine itself has since returned to its inactive state and no longer gives off any anomalous readings. So we can take it apart, and we're still going to get even more physics research out of that. This is going to take so long at 7 research per month to make up 84,547. We're just going to take it apart. Cool. So that's in Tiamat. Which is right here. I wonder where that wormhole connects to. 
We can explore wormholes with, with military ships now, right? Pretty sure that's a thing? Yes. Let's go see where that goes. I have no idea. But we do need to know so that we can determine whether we need to defend here or not. We may or may not need to do that. The shattered remnants of a cruiser-sized starship can be detected in a decaying orbit deep inside the atmosphere of Real Samat 7. It appears to have ventured far into the gas giant's atmosphere, perhaps in a desperate attempt to escape a pursuer, only to be crushed by the atmospheric pressure. The vessel is too deep to be salvaged, but a structural scan of the wreckage has provided us with some interesting engineering data. Cool. And these guys close their borders to us too. Well, that's fine. It is, of course, time to put a cut in here. So this is our head of research. Research speed in society research of 10% or just a flat 6% across the board. We're taking that. Beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and put that cut in. And next episode, we're going to see where this wormhole goes. That will be very interesting to find out. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, James, Shadow Wolf, M. Lohan80, Rogue Corvid, Kentogan, Andy Magar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.